Hey everyone, and welcome to part 7 of Let's Learn a Pokemon game. In this tutorial, we're going to be going over how to create a monster class and actually give stats to each of those monsters. And then we're going to end up taking that class and putting it into a variable that we can use and that we can create an array out of in order to create a mass list of different enemies we are going to be encountering through our journeys. So, we're just going to get started by making a new script. So just create drop JavaScript. And we'll just label this monster. So open that up. Alright, so what we're going to want to do is get rid of all this and just create a new class. And so what you want to do is you want to name this exactly the same as what you named the script itself. So see how we named this monster? You just want to make sure that your class is labeled monster. Now, before we do this, we kind of have to research a little bit into the insight of what kind of stats are possible in these types of games. So, I just went to a random wiki where you can view a lot of the different stats. It gives you an idea of how certain things are set up, what type they are, what kind of stats they have. Th this one, I don't think, lists the exact stats that you're supposed to ha start with. Um, but I'm guessing that certain games they'll list the different stats. Just on this one, it doesn't. But for now, we're just going to get very basic with it. Um, further along, we're going to be adjusting and adding to this class itself, so we can pretty much add more stats to it and do it that way. So first, we're going to create a type variable type. And we could make this an enum if we want. Um, we might actually do that. Um, yeah, let's do that. So, I forgot if that... Okay. So we'll just create a simple enum. And we'll just make this of type type. So it's pretty much similar to setting up a class. But in this, we're just having a list of objects. So let's see what we can think of. Psychic, hopefully I'm spelling that right. <laughs> Grass, psychic, water, fire, electric. And we might just do it for that. I forgot if I need to close that off or not. I guess we'll figure that out when we go to run it. <laughs> and then we'll set up our other variables that we need to check for. So for HP, even though it's just one thing here we're going to need multiple so we're going to have a base HP and this will be a type float and then we'll have a cur HP so for this way during a lot of Pokemon games when Pokemon take damage sometimes Pokemon can heal themselves and we don't want them going over their base HP and that's with a lot of other stats um, with stuff like attack power and stuff we want our attack power to go up higher but the thing is, we want to bring it back down to its normal attack power if it ever gets below. Or we always want to have at least one variable to tell us what our original one was, in case we ever want to change it back. Which is going to happen a lot with different buffs and debuffs and whatnot, so it's going to get tossed around, and you're going to lose that number if you don't have your base number. So, attack, defense, so we'll add those in. And we're going to do the same thing for this. Base attack, oh. cur attack, base defense, and current defense. So from here, we have some of the base stats out. Let's see if we should add any more. I guess we could add these. I'm not sure about SP attack and SP defense. Um, but maybe we'll come back to that later. I guess I guess this is fine. We'll just add speed for our final. And the reason that I'm using a float is because when we want to display some of these stats on the screen itself and we want that um, that HP bar that changes. Uh, you want to use a float for that if you want to change that up. 
it works a lot better that way and it and it doesn't make it so the health bar would just jump different places you can actually like yeah <laughs> so we will save this class off we're going to want to create a new script and this will just be called main and what we're going to do for this is put a lot of different things in here for now it's just going to have our monsters our monsters and this is an easy way to keep track of everything too so all monsters we want to create a variable and we'll just call it all monsters and we'll make it of type monster so if you see here for our class this is what we're going to be plugging into here but we also want to add that it's an array so that we can actually add a bunch of these different types of monsters and we can go through and change the stuff for each one actually I forgot one more thing Aim. So we'll save that off. And now what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to create a new empty game object. Let's change that up real quick. Um, let's make it that. And we'll call this main as well. Now what we're going to want to do is we want to drag and drop our main script onto there. And so with this monster class, we don't have to do anything with it. You don't have to drag and drop it on anything. It just stays in your scripts folder and you'll be able to access that whenever you're trying to call that. And now we have a size here, so our array needs at least some very, or some number to actually add stuff to it. We'll set it to 5 for now. Now we see we have a bunch of different elements. When we drop this down, you see we have everything listed here. So I can make this maybe monster1, drop this down, monster2, and we can go through um, base HP. We'll make these simple numbers. And we want to set these the exact same for each. They're going to get adjusted eventually, but we just want to have them the same. So I guess the smarter thing to do with this would be to actually lay out a spreadsheet and do it that way. Speed, we'll say 2. And we can also drop down the type as well. So this is where that enum comes in place. It's pretty much just a drop down. This is an easier way to categorize certain things. And it makes it a lot easier to not have to type out strings and whatnot. You can just use a simple enum to go through and select. So we'll make this monster fire. And we can make this one, you know, we'll keep it at grass. So base HP for this one, we can just change up the different numbers. And say maybe seven for attack. Maybe this one has really high defense. And speed, we can make it three. Now, I'm not sure exactly how the Pokemon games calculate a lot of these stats out. I've done a lot of tutorials in the past and made a lot of games that are RPG oriented. And I could come up with my own system for calculating these stats if I really wanted to. That's kind of why I said when I started the the clone thing that it's going to be a Pokemon game but it's not going to be exactly like one. Um, since it's a clone it's not probably going to be exact down to like a pin <laughs> how to exactly set up all how all the stats are calculated but I'm pretty sure there's I think I believe uh, I saw like a calculator or something so maybe I can figure it out. But yeah um, this is just a quick tutorial on how to set up these monsters and what we're going to be doing is actually when we go into battle randomizing which monsters are going to show up in the battle or which monster in general. So each one of these will have its own region and we can go through and search for region and we can check oh well these monsters are in this region and then we'll roll random and whenever the random hits will be the monster. Uh, rare monsters will have really low numbers so we're gonna ha have to group up a bunch, bunch of monsters together and do a random and some monsters need to have a lower number out of that 100. So maybe a common monster would, ha if you roll between 1 and 30, um, the monster will show up. But if you roll a like 95, then a rare monster will show up. 
I might end up changing that system, but that's kind of how I want it set up for now. Um, it'll be a lot easier for people to follow along that way, even though it's uh, going to be a lot more code. But yeah, stay tuned for more tutorials, guys.